G'day everyone, this is Health Highlights. Health Highlights is a show about health, health professionals, and the people and the stories behind the names we hear about that we seldom get to meet. Now there's a new craze that is starting to take root around the world, which is organic food, food is medicine. But back in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, if you even considered food to be medicine for you, or even good for you, or even go the organic way, you were considered liberal, or you are considered crazy. But there was a few people that stood up and said, you know what, we believe that this is the way for health. And Cindy O'Meara is one of them. Thank, how are you, Cindy? I'm oh, good, thanks, Simon. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, I have to say that I've seen your journey over many years, and it is an honor to have you on our show. You. Cindy, if you don't know who Cindy is, she is an international speaker. She's written many books. Um, Changing Habits is her business, and she's also done a, um, a documentary around wheat, mm. I believe. Mm -hmm. But firstly, Cindy, you're here in a, um, doing a sort of a tour around Australia. Can you sort of tell us a little bit about what you're doing? Uh, yeah, so what I'm doing is getting back into the country. So I always used to do the country, and then I stopped doing the country, and I started to do the cities. And last year I was in the US seven times because of my documentary. It made it on Netflix, and I wanted to promote it, and I did a TED video. And I rang my team members about halfway through the year and I said, I want to get back into the country, let's do a country tour. Uh, and I find that when you're in the country, people come because not many people go to the country. So number one, it was about getting to more people, getting more people to understand what's happening. But what I'm speaking about is two things. One is what has happened to our food and the trickery that's happening in the food industry mm. with our food and boy that is when I see it and it's tricking people that I think are in the know and they're not because they're putting it in their food products. Yeah, wow. So it's about the trickery of, of the food industry and how do we decipher what all these things are, um, are and the second thing is we're looking at an historical perspective of food. So taking a glimpse into the cultures that still exist today and how they've survived for thousands of generations without the health issues that we now see. Wonderful, mm. that is amazing. So I'd love to hear, just very quickly, the trickery. What are some of the things that they're doing mm. to trick us into certain foods that we've yeah. got? Yeah, well there's this new thing in the industry called clean labeling. Right. And they don't want you to know that that's what they call it, but it's where they will change the name of say BHA and BHT, which is an antioxidant synthetically made, to rosemary extract. Right. Or they may change a preservative to celery extract. Or they may call it vegetable and herb extract. So what they do is that they um, look at a banana, say, uh, and this is a flavor, let's do flavor. So when you see the word natural flavoring, everyone thinks, oh, it's natural. But when you see behind the word, you see 48 chemicals that have been put together by a food industry that's masters of disguise. Mm. So what to make it natural, they'll, let's say it's banana flavoring, they'll take a chemical out of the banana that gives you the smell of the banana that makes you think it's the banana and then add a whole bunch of other things, but that's why it's called So how can they call it natural? Because they've extracted one chemical out of a banana. And that's okay? That's okay. Wow. That and is... you'll see it with natural coloring. Yep. So natural coloring might be chlorophyll or beetroot, you know, these are the mm. colors, or carrot. And then you ask the excipients and there's propylene glycol in it, synthetically made curcumin, um, which that's another story. Uh, it might have polysorbate 80 in it, which is an emulsifier, which they also put in vaccines. So they put all these things in there that I don't know if the body really knows how to handle it. No, actually we know that the body doesn't know how to handle it because they're new chemicals. That's right. And there's the new you know, science of nutrigenomics, which says nutrition is not only about the the energy it gives you and the building blocks, but it's also speaking to your DNA, up-regulating or down-regulating proteins. Mm, that's very interesting, wow. Yeah. So we don't know what these chemicals are doing. We're just playing, we're just a human experiment, that's all we are. That's, that's very, mm. we think that we wouldn't be that, but that's the case. That's what we are, yeah. yeah. So back in the 80s, you were studying nutrition. Mm -hmm. um, I love your passion for this. And also, I love, I love your story. Mm -hmm. So can you just share a little bit about your story, about how you became disillusioned with the way that or the direction that nutrition was going back then yeah and what was the what was the outcome of that disillusionment yeah so I started at the University of Colorado yep. I wanted to uh, I was doing pre-med because I didn't know what I wanted to do and I did a class in anthropology for a year and I realized it was food that was the most important thing and as the food as we evolved food evolved with us and I thought oh, I'm gonna be a dietitian so I came back to Australia, finished my Bachelor of Science, back to go and do a diploma. That was, you know, back nearly four decades ago. 
um, about to go do a, a diploma and I realized I didn't agree with anything. So I went back to university, did human anatomy, cut up cadavers for two years and thought, it's not the dead ones I really care about, it's actually the live ones. Realized I knew enough about nutrition to actually practice as a nutritionist without having a dietetics degree. Because if I had dietetics, I would have had to follow the dietary guidelines, which I didn't agree with. So that was the outcome is that I started to teach the exact opposite. So I, they said low fat, I said no, let's eat fat. They said eat breakfast cereals, I said no, don't go near them. They said low fat with milks and things like that. I said no, just eat, drink the normal milks. And um, margarine, they'd say, I say no, eat butter. So it was very much opposed to what they were teaching at the time. And so yeah. that leads me to the, the resistance that you may have experienced over the last <laughs> 30 years. <laughs> What are some of those resistance that you've really confronted over that time? I still have resistance. I'm sure you yeah, do. Yeah, it's still there. Well, I wrote um, for a local paper for two years and there was resistance by so many people. It was a very controversial, polarizing co um, column. Um, and it was, it was just about the fake foods and lean cuisines and healthy choices. And, and this was what was being served in hospitals and this is what was being advised by dietitians. Um, at the time and even the margarine is still being advised by the dietitians mm. even now today and butter the saturated fat Controversy is still going even though there's no science and the science that was there 40 50 60 years ago um, It wasn't there actually, you know, they're, right. they're starting to realize that we were just duped. Yeah, wow So there's lots in many polarizing ways is um, the, the, There has been resistance, but what I'm seeing probably in the last decade is people are beginning to realize that what we were doing is not working and they're looking for a new way and you know the ones that are really doing this and this is the mums yes. the mums are seeing sick kids yes and these kids are born with lifelong illnesses basically or they um, get these lifelong illnesses within their first year of life and so what are the changes that you've actually seen that have been positive in the last say 30 years I am actually seeing many doctors realizing that the dietary guidelines they never went to the dietary guidelines because they didn't work mm. you know they weren't seeing a change in their diabetic patients or their metabolic syndrome patients or their heart patients but now i'm seeing i, I was actually in a room it was like this surreal moment for me where a gastroenterologist and a radiographer were speaking about the low um, carbohydrate high fat ketogenic mm. diet and there was a bunch of GPs in the room and two dietitians in the room. And I was just sitting there going, seeing this, them all nodding. And I realized that there is a real movement towards food because what we're doing right now with getting, figuring out the disease and treating with medications is not working. In actual fact, we're just doing this polypharmacy. So I think the doctors are starting to see this. Dietitians are beginning to see it. The naturopaths are beginning to see it. Everybody's beginning to see this we have to go back to food. This is, um, and, and I think the DNA testing that they're doing, the genetic testing that they're doing at the moment is really showing where nutrigenomics is working well. And, um, and, and you know, the science is there to back it up. So in your opinion, is that the biggest issues that we're confronting is the fact that we're so pharmacy orientated in our society or are there other major issues, for example, refined foods and other things like that that we are still confronting today? Oh, I think it's a combination. Mm. I really do. I think, you know, we are used to get sick, take a medication, you know, it's nothing to take a Panadol or an aspirin or a, um, an antibiotic. Everybody's just, they just thought that this was, this is easy, it's a quick pill fix, but it's not working. You know, we're, we're just waiting for the horse to bolt and then we give it something, but it's too late. Yeah. So then we've got to try other means. I think that's one thing, as well as um, the convenience of food, yep. the agriculture, the chemicals um, in our agriculture, I think all of them across the board, um, people are waking up. So when, look, when we look at the food, do you think that there's too much alteration of food these days and therefore that's also harming our bodies? Yeah, if you look at nutrigenomics, definitely the food that um, we eat today is not the food that we, we you know, ate only 40 years ago. Mm. And I look back, you know, even a hundred years ago, it has is no, and I'm talking about packaged foods. I'm not talking about these foods that we grow in our garden and that we get at our farmer's markets. We can still, you know, our body knows what to do with them. It doesn't know what to do with 50 additives 
in a food that looks like food, smells like food, tastes like food, but isn't food because of the masters that know how to do that for you. Yes. Like I look at a healthy protein bar. I see an ingredient list that's this long, that's, you know, 50 lines long. You cannot tell me the body knows what to do with that. And so what we're seeing is an increase in autoimmune disease, cancer, diabetes, heart disease, in our children, autism, asthma, allergies, food sensitivities. Our adult population has gut problems that is beyond them knowing what to do with them. And then we have our sinus and dementia in, the, in our age population. So we're not getting better. We're getting sicker. Mm -hmm. we, don't, we may have a longer lifespan. We have a very short health span. And what I'd like to see happen is that we look at the health span, not the lifespan. Who cares about how old we live as long as we live well? Mm. You know, to say, oh, we're living to 80. But half of those people are in homes with dementia, Alzheimer's, autoimmune disease on a polypharmacy and not living a great health span. I love that word, health span. Yeah. So what are some of the key things to actually improving our health span? Mm -hmm. There's just a couple of basic principles for okay. us. We have an evolutionary body. Yep. So it's, it's about food is one thing, but it's also sunlight. It's about um, sleeping. It's about turning those lights off, the blue lights especially, and, um, and, and making sure that our body that is a very, based on circadian rhythms, um, understands where it is in space, time, and season. Yep. It's about putting our feet on the ground, grounding. It's, it's all of those things that our evolutionary body needs. There's a, there's a book out that I saw recently, it's called The Biophilia Effect, and it's about how nature heals us. So it's about tricking in this modern day, this evolutionary body in believing it's still back there. That's, that's to me is the way to do it. And so one of your big things that you'll talk about is the innate body healing mm. mechanism of the body. Now, can you explain to our viewers what that is and yeah. how does that work? Well, the body has an innate intelligence um, and I can explain that really quickly. So when you eat food, you um, don't tell the salivary glands to produce salivary to create a bolus to go down the esophagus. You don't tell the esophagus to create a wave. You don't tell the, the stomach cells to produce hydrogen chloride. You don't tell the pancreas to do things. It does it. The minute you put food near your body and you smell it, the body starts to react to that. It makes ATP, an energy that, how do we know how to do that? But our body knows how to do it. Give the body the right resources, all those evolutionary principles, stop interfering with it, with medications and drugs and um, not sleeping and not getting sunlight and all the chemicals that are interfering with that innate intelligence. And the body knows how to be healthy. Yeah. Look at our, you know, our tribes that we still see today, it's like the Hadsas in Tanzania, the Kagiers in Premier, the, the Inuits in Greenland, the, the Himbas in um, Namibia. Look at them. They have none of these diseases. None of them. They, they may eat, one tribe only eats dairy as a main source. They may have a few other things, but it's mainly dairy. Another tribe just eats meat and veg and honey. 30% of their diet is honey. So, and, and they live that evolutionary lifestyle. That's brilliant, wonderful. Mm. And so finally, what's the, what's the future for Cindy? What, where where mm. to, you, uh, Hollywood? You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know, you, you've figured out done everything. Um, what, 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 what's the next step? I think I'd like to do a series, a television series on, like my documentary is What's With Wheat. Mm -hmm. So I think I'd like to do what's with dairy, what's with flavor, what's with clean mm. labeling, what's with, awesome. so create a, a bit of a television series. And we have that planned for 2019. Wonderful. 2018 is me getting back into Australia and getting back talking. And we also have um, a marketplace. So we have the Changing Habits Marketplace that we released last weekend. Awesome. And that is a place where people can come where I've endorsed the food. So it's not just changing habits foods, it's actually um, all the foods that I buy um, uh, throughout Australia. So it could be nuts and apple cider vinegars and um, it could be fish, you know, where do I find clean fish? And But that's in package form, not in, not your local foods, this is foods that you can't buy locally. Wonderful. Well, that's, that's amazing. <laughs> You're certainly doing amazing things and look, um, thank you everyone for joining us. I am sure you've absolutely loved hearing all that Cindy's been telling us about health and well-being. If you want to find any more information about Cindy um, or see her movie or the documentaries you do or her business, all the information for that will be on the screen right now. Cindy, I just want to thank you for being a light and shining bright 
in our community and really highlighting health and healthy lifestyle and helping us catch up to really <laughs> what nature has been telling us all along. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So thank you everyone for joining us. Have a wonderful week. We'll see you same time and we'll have another interview with Cindy next week as well. See you later. Thanks, Simon. <laughs> Brilliant.